In this video, I'll solve an example for the slope and displacement by integration section. As a bonus, we'll also take a look at the elastic curve. Alright, so I'll give you a moment to pause and read through the question on your own, and if you want, you can try attempting this question too. Okay, so this question is asking us to solve for two things. The first is the elastic curve for the cantilever beam when the beam is subjected to ML. And the second is the maximum slope and deflection of the beam. We're also told that EI is constant. Now let's take a quick look at the beam. Notice how there isn't any distributed loads acting on it. This just means the distributed load function is equal to zero. And so we'll be needing the moment function instead. On the following slide, we'll begin solving for the elastic curve. On this slide, we'll begin solving for the elastic curve. All right, so we'll start off with the free body diagram. Now, if we sum the forces in the vertical direction, AY would equal zero. Now, if we take the sum of moments of a point A, we'll end up with MA equals MO. On this slide, we'll determine the elastic curve. On the previous slide, we saw for the support forces and moments at point A, and we figured out that the only vertical force, AY, is equal to zero. In other words, there aren't any vertical forces acting along the beam, and so the shear force diagram would just be zero. Now we'll move on to the moment diagram. We'll take a cut at a distance of x from point A and draw the corresponding free body diagram. We'll label the moment at the cut as mx, where mx represents the moment as a function of x. Now, if we sum the moments about the cut, we'll end up with mx equals negative mo. Since mx equals negative mo, the moment function is simply constant. So the corresponding moment diagram will look something like this. Since the moment function is below the x-axis, it means that the moment produces a concave down deflection, like so. Based on the curve, the greatest deflection and slope will occur at point B. Now that we have the elastic curve, I'll begin solving for the maximum deflection and slope on the following slide. On this slide, we'll begin solving for the maximum deflection and slope. We'll accomplish this by using the following moment function. And as we determined on the previous slide, mx equals negative mo. Using the moment function, we'll solve for vx, where vx represents the vertical deflection function. And we'll also need dv over dx, where dv over dx represents the slope function. We'll also need to apply the boundary conditions to solve for the constants. So at point A, we have a fixed support, and so the vertical deflection equals zero, and the slope equals zero as well. Now that we have all the information we need, I'll begin solving for the vertical deflection on the following slide. On this slide, we'll determine the equations for both the vertical deflection and slope. We'll start off by determining the general equations. All right, so we'll take the following moment equation. If we integrate both sides with respect to x, we'll end up with a general equation for the slope. Now, if we integrate each side of the general slope equation, we'll end up with the general equation for the vertical deflection. Now we'll set these equations aside and solve for the constants c1 and c2. We'll accomplish this by applying the previously identified boundary conditions. As I previously mentioned, the slope at x equals zero is also equal to zero. And so, if we take the general equation for the slope and plug in the corresponding values, we'll end up with c1 equals zero. Now we'll move on to the deflection condition. As I previously mentioned, the deflection at x equals zero is also equal to zero. And so, if you plug in the corresponding values into the general equation for the vertical deflection, we'll end up with c2 equals zero. Now we'll take c1 and c2 and plug it into these equations. So after we simplify these equations, we'll end up with the equation for the slope and vertical deflection for this particular problem. On the following slide, we'll use these equations to figure out the maximum slope and deflection. On this slide, we'll start for the maximum deflection. I've included all the equations we'll be needing on the corner of the page. So the maximum deflection will occur when the slope is equal to zero. So if we solve for x when the slope is equal to zero, we should be able to obtain the maximum deflection. Depending on the number of x values, there may be several deflections, and so the remaining deflections would represent local maximums or minimums. 
So if we let the slope function equal 0 and solve for x, we'll end up with x equals 0. But this doesn't make sense because x equals 0 would mean the maximum deflection occurs at the fixed support. And as you already know, the deflection at the support is equal to 0. So we can't rely on the dv over dx equal to 0 without considering the physical constraints. As a result, we'll need to utilize the elastic curve to solve for the maximum deflection. So based on the elastic curve, the maximum deflection will occur at the open end of the beam. Or in other words, the maximum deflection will occur when x is equal to L. So if you plug L into the vertical deflection function, we'll end up with the following equation. And this equation represents the maximum deflection. Also note, this negative sign is an indication that the deflection occurs downwards. And this makes sense based on our elastic curve. Now that we have the maximum deflection, we'll solve for the maximum slope on the following slide. On this slide, we'll solve for the maximum slope. The maximum slope would occur when the second derivative of the deflection function equals zero. We could then solve and use those x values to obtain the maximum slope. So if we take a derivative of the slope function, we'll end up with the following equation. But as you can see, we ended up with a constant, and that's not very helpful. So just as before, we'll take a look at the elastic curve. Based on the elastic curve, the maximum slope will occur when x is equal to L. So if you plug x equals L into the slope equation, we'll be able to obtain the maximum slope. Notice how the sign is negative. This just means that the rotation of the slope occurs in the clockwise direction. And this concludes the video for this section. In the following video, I'll be talking about the method of superposition.